Hello, everyone, and welcome to another fucking Islanders podcast. And with me today, I'm with the very intelligent human hockey Wikipedia, Brandon Gaines, the highly optimistic, always blunt, John Dombrowski, and the realist, realist, really painfully honest, Eric, hashtag, no longer trade Barzell Vogel. That is right. Thank you, Mike. (laughs) We are another fucking Islanders podcast, and the trade Barzell season is over. He has yep. signed. It is over for now. And now, right now we just need to see if he's going to be worth his contract. A lot of things have happened since we've last seen you guys. We've gone through most of the preseason. The Atu Ratu will be a starting forward on the New York Islanders train is probably dead. The yeah. William Dufour will be a New York Islander. It train is definitely dead. Yeah. And the Nikita Sashnikov will be a New York Islander train is alive and well. But what do you guys think of the preseason so far? Mike, we'll start with you. Uh, just, I've, I've watched every game. Um, like you said, Nikita Sashnikov, I think, has actually been the most impressive forward. Let's be careful there. Mm-hmm. And I think I think for defense, we're really looking at Robin Sala with that 6D spot. Now, I'd say that's, that's pretty good. You're going to have a really exciting Bridgeport team. Um, I, I, we have to go over who we were excited for again, because I know I said Ruslan Ishikov, and he didn't play a single minute. So, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't know what happened, but maybe they just don't think he's NHL nah, ready. No, nah, so. nah, nah, he, he was hurt. He was hurt. Oh, he was hurt. Okay. Mm-hmm. See, oh, I didn't see him. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? So, was he, I was, was on the – shallow... Oh, tiny? sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> was he hurt because he's this tiny? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, he's five eight and a half <laughs> on skates. Um, uh, I haven't watched any of the preseason. I've okay. been told multiple times by Mike that the preseason doesn't count. Nothing counts for yeah. anything. Uh, but from what I've heard and the highlights I've seen, Sashnikov, I'd love to see him on the fourth line instead of one of the normal ID liners. <laughs> yeah. Whether Lane Lambert is brave enough to do that in the face of, you know, Isles Homer's everywhere clamoring for that line and, and what it brings to the team. Uh, you know, I, I had DeFore being the potential impact uh, guy, but, you know, he's already down in Bridgeport and scoring goals and probably making Thompson mad because he's so good at hockey. <laughs> Did, so you, see, did had, you see the goal he scored real quick? I did. Was it good? Oh, yeah, it was a blast. It was a power play. Absolute right? blast. Yep. And he, That's I mean, usually it, his goals. He's really, really good at shooting and not much else. You, you're well, we talking about, Duf- you're talking, so he, well, he belongs you're talk- there. You're talking about DeFore, right, Eric, though? Yeah. Yeah, you know, honestly, he's all, he's an NHL player. He just got, he has to learn the game at the NHL level. He's not used to the speed. Q is much well, slower, so thing. he's a little slow. I question his skating, and um, I question the hands a little when bit. He, but he has when he gets going. Shot. When he gets going, he's okay. Yeah. Thankfully, we have just the AHL coach to to really yeah. mold him. Yeah, to right. Oh, something boy. less than he really is. <laughs> All right, John. How do you feel about the preseason? Let's hear it. So I've watched highlights mostly, but okay. uh, I came into the preseason looking for Robin Salo to take the six to six D spot, like <laughs> cement himself in there. And it seems like he's done that so far. He looks poised. He looks comfortable out there. It seems like the coaching change really helped him. He looks a lot more like sure of himself out there. And so I think he has definitely cemented his spot in the lineup. But outside of him, I think Sashnikov looks really good. And I like Romanov. I know a lot of people have been saying he's hit or miss with Dobson, but he's yeah. looking fast out there. He's, he's throwing the body around. And I think they're building a rapport. It's going to be a process, but I do think that that line is going to, it, like that him and Dobson, they're going to make it work. And, when it does, they're going to play well, both of them. My turn? Yes, you, Brandon. Oh, okay. I, agree, I agree with what you said, though, John. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, weirdly, my most – so, I've watched the entire preseason so far. And 
you take it with a grain of salt, same way you do with the NFL, mm -hmm. spring training, NBA. I mean, come on, the 2008 Detroit Lions went 4-0. How would that turn out for them during the regular season? Yeah. Oh, it's 16. Seriously, but <laughs> you know, obviously, no, it's really, it was really bad. I cannot no, believe I that. Was, I remember. That was, that was hilarious. But who do I think, who do I think stands out? So obviously you got to look at Robin Sallow and he pushed uh, Chalowski down the minors. And you know mm. what? Good. Good. Because that's what was needed last season. Like you needed Sallow and Mayfield last season. You're too late, but we're finally getting it. And you're going to have that solidify. You're going to have your armor of Pelic Pollock. And it's probably going to take about a month or two for Romanov Dobson to like be solidified the same way Pelican yeah, Paul in 2019. So. Listen, it's not going to work right away. They're going to have their ups. They're going to have their downs. Romanov may get less ice time. Dobson may get less ice time and some and vice versa. But as far as forwards go, people want to say uh, Sashnikov and he's got a great speed element to his game. Please push mm -hmm. Ross uh, Tarot Bridgeport. Please, <laughs> that'd, be a, that'd be a dream come true. But as far as forwards go, Keeper Bells has been the most impressive to me. Um, I know he, I know he had that little gaffe on the Ryan Graves goal. I get that, but all in all, like he's playing to his size now. He's playing to his size. He's actually, you know, he made that one pass that, like in the in the late first period, that Bovillia couldn't corral. That's mostly on Bo, unfortunately. You know, he's actually showing willingness to distribute more. He's willing to, like, he's he went, he like two efficient four checks in the second period and still got a shot off in the process. You know, I like, I like how he's just rounded his game so far. He and, looks faster too. And he looks faster. And Lampert is rewarding him, not only with, you know, with Pajot, but he's also gotten some good amount of ice time playing with Brock Nelson as well. Yeah. You know, I get it. I get Anders Lee's not playing today, but, you know, that's, seems to be the ideal replacement for Lee in case of an injury or eventual decline in Lee's game. You know, mm -hmm. it seems that that is what Lambert eventually wants to do. And Bell is taking his opportunities in stride. Uh, I'm going to throw in the secret category for tonight right now. Okay. Which is what is going on with Scott Mayfield, Oliver Wallstrom, and who's the other guy who's been out all three games? Scott Mayfield, Isaac. Oliver Wallstrom, and Clutterbuck. And Clark. Oh, well, Clutterbuck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you'd... is this an injury? Can we Isaiah George. Wild? Well, <laughs> Isaiah George, we know he's injured. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, but... he's already designated to the AOHL. Right? And you can he knock off been. Clutterbuck, yeah. too. You guys, you guys know Clutterbuck's hurt. I mean, what else would it be? Yeah. The guy's always hurt. It's... He's not That's why I don't understand hurt. what. He's got uh, some very often. He's if he wanna, played hurt. If we want to play the Isles speculation game here, they could be working on a trade for like maybe Chikrin or something along those lines. But oh, you it. that's that's why Eric brought this up. You guys think they're making a trade? I don't see it. <laughs> it was but... a gag. It was what what'd you say? <laughs> it was a gag mostly. It was a gag. I <laughs> He was looking for a response, and I gave it to him. <laughs> I I don't think it's very Lou. It, there's no first round pick involved yet, so <laughs> none of them are ex New Jersey Devils. True. Or Leafs. Yeah. Unless we're getting Matthews, right? See or that Seth. was see, that was the oh. thing about that was the thing about fucking Mikheyev that still kills me. He was a Leaf. It's oh, I'm Minnesota. so glad we didn't get him. By the way, John, guy gets hurt in the second game of pre no. Was it was it the first game of preseason? I know. I was like, he's had the worst luck. I mean, I ugh. oh, I can't. Me, I get it. I get that it. Would have, completely. That would that would have been so Islanders to sign this really exciting forward, and then he gets hurt right away. I mean, ugh. yeah. But I that still could, that, that could have been what was discussed about with that European scout. He could have told him maybe. Him. Lou that hey um you know i brought mckay in but you know he had some injury issues overseas he's had some injury issues with the leafs do you want another proceed, andrew lad proceed with caution maybe no, I, I i don't think he's lad i don't think mckay i'm just talking, talking strictly no, 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 injuries no. yeah strictly but injuries mckay always been hurt it's not a fair assessment 
he's not a player who dealt with tons of injuries. He just had like a freak accident happen. Mikhaev could tear yeah. both of his knees twice, and he could skate better than Andrew Ladd still. Yeah, like, yeah. Seriously, you know, like it's, but that's why you probably don't commit long term to Mikhaev because you. <laughs> Yes, I mean, no, you don't. yeah. In all seriousness, though, Eric, I think it's just maintenance day. If you can hear me, they've been out for a couple games. Have have, have Wallstrom played in the first preseason game and then hasn't since? I, but here's the thing: you wouldn't you wouldn't risk if someone's not feeling like if something's a little off. You're not going to risk them in a preseason game. I mean, didn't especially play, didn't, didn't he play against the Flyers on? I on, thought on week? I, Wallstrom. Yeah, Wallstrom played against the Flyers. I, the I think so. I think he played in the yeah. third game, did he not? Yeah. So Wallstrom's not hurt, uh, although he might have something nagging. I'm not. Well, everyone, I, I think every, they might be being really cautious with Wallstrom. Mayfield, I really do think, is hurt. He's going to miss at least like a week or two, I would say. Like, real actual hard. Time. That's not That's, the start we want to have. That uh, is, <laughs> That's not great. Atu Ratu. A lot of people, I know Eric Eric and John haven't watched a lot of preseason. A lot of people have been worried about Wallstrom's play. But, like, I mean, in the same token, you can look at Parise, who's been kind of terrible. I mean, he can barely handle the puck half the time when he gets it. You know, I'm, yeah, not, but, I'm not really. But there's a difference between the two players. I, I think they're both third-line guys. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, no, one's a lot younger, but. That's not what the difference is. Wallstrom is in a position where he actually has something to prove Ooh. still, and preseason oh is meaningful to him in Sorry. terms of finding a role. Parise, he's kind of set. Preseason to him is just don't get hurt. Got you. Sorry. Ratu just scored, and I was like, oh, my God. That was a nice score, yeah. I forgot he was in the game tonight. Who was he no, skating he with? He looked great. He has a golden and assist so far. Who was he skating and, with? And a little, And a small injury. <laughs> yeah, 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 and he got hurt and came back. Holy yeah. heck, that shot! That was a what was fun. that? How old is he? Nineteen. He is going to be really good in like two years. I think he's already really good. He just needs like to learn the NHL game. Well, that's what I mean. He's like two four. Like that's that's what I said to Brent. That's how, what I said to Brandon. I feel like with two four, his skating isn't even that bad. Once he gets going, he's He's like an Anders Lee. I, I don't think uh, – he's not a good skater, but he's decent. I mean, he can keep up. He just has to learn the speed of the NHL game. He's not I don't used think to Lee's the, skating was ever really that good, though. Like, I like no. Harrison to Lee. I agree. I think he is like an Anders Lee type player. He's, he's, he's a low-end skater, skater, but at the like NHL level. Slow. There's, there's a big difference between he can't skate and he can skate like at, at least at the NHL level. Because you watch someone like Koivula, the guy the guy can't even get over the blue line. I mean, it's like... It's well, sure. Even... Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's... Dufour's so, not that bad. Dufour, no, he's not and, the worst. And once Dufour gets in stride, he's fine. It's just, you know, about getting his feet moving. So, all hmm. right, what's next? What's next? Okay. Uh, Matt Barzell's Barzell's contract? Yes. The... Extension extinguishing all trade negotiation, all trade uh, trade rumors. The rampant, rampant Gee, trade. Rumors. I wonder who could have came up with those across Islanders Twitter. Disappointing, mm. so many. Yeah. Well, more than, more you than should have seen Facebook. <laughs> oh, people are upset. People eight are upset. Years, eight years with a nine point one five AAV and a lot of modified no trade clauses. What yeah, who yeah. doesn't do those usually? What do you think, John? Um, I think it's an overpayment first and foremost, but I think you kind of have to overpay for your stars at times. Uh, it's a situation where he can grow into his contract, and I think you will, given the players that they put around him and the new coaching style. I think he's going to have a more offensively gifted season than he had last year and put up better numbers. And he's going to look, it's going to look like a better contract as it goes on. But right now it does seem like a little too much money for me. I would have wanted somewhere in the eight, eight, eight and a half range, but good. We got him happy. We got him. Brandon. 
I mean, you're but you're buying seven unrestricted free agent years, and the cap is projected to go up by ten million. Within Which is why I'm all right with it as it ages. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, I mean, the the issue is 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 Barzell going to be used properly over the course of that contract? Probably if he's not, not if, if he's not used consistently and properly, then the contract isn't going to look that well. No. But if he is, and you know, that's gravy right there. It's gonna look. It would look great if he was used properly. Well, Barzal uh, also needs to be more assertive with the puck in, in regards to decision making. Yeah, but he. But his job is to be the playmaker. It's his wingers who are supposed to attack, not him. He can attack I, if you want, but he's supposed to be the driver and playmaker. Like listen, that's. I job. understand that he's I supposed to be our backstrom. He he's to... supposed to be our backstrom. That's a, that's sure. his job. Sure, but. He also like out of curiosity, put... how good do we think Backstrom is without Ovi? <laughs> no, nah, he's fantastic. Yeah, he was kind of throughout his career, one of the best passers truly in the game. Yeah, he could. I, I, yeah, no, there's a reason they put them together. Like I said, these players, you know, on, on good teams don't get put together by accident. There, there's but a reason. The problem is you it, can make it. You can make making, a case. See, Barzal is now making. I'm going to lead the team and carry you money. And if he's making, I'm going to carry you money. That means it is his responsibility to, regardless of his line mates, be like, I'm going to find a way to make this work. The problem is, he even does if he that. has shit line mates, he's done that already. If he's that good of a playmaker to put them in positions to succeed. If but, it's a line mate, that, but if his line mates, but if his line mates, but if his line mates can't finish, that's not his fault. Yeah, that's right. That's my point. And the contract isn't for him to primarily carry the team to the extent that you're making it out to be. He's not making eight figures. You know, they, they he's they, they, making they, right around there, man. Like I know, but 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 but, but, but talking about the fact that Cap's projected to go as high as it is and sure. him not getting eight figures. Uh, they, how much know, did they, Robert Thomas just get paid? Uh Robert Thomas got paid eight point one two five. Yeah, and, he, and, and honest, and you've seen just a little flash of him. Meanwhile, we've seen Barzell be excellent for five years. You know, no, to be fair, for that production. Best, best. We've seen to, we, to, to, we've to be seen fair, Barzell to be fair, to be fair on a though. micro level, we have not seen Barzell be excellent on a actual point totals level since he uh, emerged into the league. To be to be oh, fair, yeah. to, to be fair though, Robert Thomas also had a huge amount of numbers but he also yeah. was out there behind ryan o'reilly bray and shannon david perron but he's but with that being said he's still what he lacks in terms of consistently driving play like barzell does he brings in ter- he brings with a 200 foot game more and more so than matt barzell does right. so you got to overpay I, a little bit i knew we were going to have this barzell conversation right when eric brought it up but like to me like I said, points don't equal production. If Barzell is playing 17, 18 minutes a night, you can't expect him to have 90, 100 points. It's just not good. I mean, you go look at JT and Molson. Those guys were playing 24, 25, 26 minutes a night. That's why they were producing, you know, those numbers. Barzell is not really set up to succeed in this system. They play, they play two first lines, kind of. It is what it is, or two second lines, if we're being honest. I, don't know, I just I the whole thing with Barzell not having enough points always bothers me because if you look at his rate of production, it's up there with guys who make the same amount of money as he is right now, or or it, problem, re- relative to when the deals were signed. So that's problem, probably why he got even, that number. The problem is even with his even with the amount of time he's put on the ice, his expected goal totals are always incredibly high. Yeah, they're much higher than what they are. In actuality, and part of that right. is that he has bad line mates, but part <laughs> yeah. of that is also that he makes poor decisions. That's not. I, I but think. That, I, but that doesn't. I think. Do I disagree him, with that. Poor yeah, decisions that built into the expected goals. Now, John's not wrong though, but you, I mean, you nitpick with Barzell because what he does best doesn't work on the Islanders. If you had Ovechkin to the left of him, he'd have 90 points and people would be like, well, he's worth the contract and more, but he Eric, doesn't. He plays, he's playing with a fourth, fourth liner in Zach Parise. Eric, on a cup team. goals is built in because they assume 
that somebody is on the other side of the puck that is competent. If somebody else, if somebody is on the other side of the puck that's not competent, and Barzal is that good of a playmaker, it's his job to know that and change, adjust. Yes, but he has nobody. That, like when you talk about competence, the, there's no, there are no goal, there are no goal scorers who can mesh with him on the level that he needs to be meshed with. Oh, Paul Mary can hundred percent mesh. With Anders Lee. Paul Mary, Paul Mary can, Parise can't. But Paul, Paul Mary is still Paul debatable. We don't. Him. We still don't even know what Paul Mary is because if he's going to be the guy that hits 15 posts, we're not winning. Like he has to score goals. I mean, if at some, I, I, I like Paul Mary, but like I don't even think he's what Barzell needs. I think he needs. I mean, I mean he wasn't. He, you know, he wasn't you could, really you could, like. You could, that, you could throw that argument at Bovillier with all the posts that he hit last year. Well, I would also I, say Paul Mary wasn't really put in a position to succeed no, for the wasn't. first half of the season. <laughs> He's going to get every chance imaginable this year. I'm telling you. And if he's not good, I mean, at that point, uh, like we, we saw him be good in the second half of the season. All right. So, I know, my take, so my take on the Barzil contract is that like every other player on this team, he is exactly valued. That is, that is almost I, I like, I, I, I swear to God, I feel like that is exactly what he's worth. And that, and that is, weird on a number of levels because it both makes him hard to trade. So it makes him hard to trade because he's not, you're not, you're not, not, I'm, I'm sorry. Why that? Everybody on the team is, 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 is he is valued appropriately, man. I can't believe, I can't believe how upset you are that we can't trade Barzell now, man. <laughs> no, I, look, man. I, I am happy. It's clearly a step in the right direction. I'm glad that we're not losing our star player for nothing. But the fact, like the second he signed, I became nervous because it's still the same team. And this is what, like, this is what we're, this is what it is now. And, you know, Phil can talk as much as we, as much as he wants about, oh, we're going to have more cap next year, more cap next year. But, Nobody has nobody has come to the island yet. Nobody has been like, "Hey, let's, you know, I can find my cup on Long Island." And until it'll, that, it'll, and it'll never happen. It's not. Why? It, you're right. Why not going to never happen. happen. And we, why? Which is why accurately paying players exactly what they worth is going to screw this team in the long run because you you can't trade them because they're 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 worth you're you're they're you're you always going to be getting the production for what it's worth. But and you're not gonna and you're also not gonna trade them because you're not gonna attach assets to them to trade somebody who's being paid what they're worth. It's fine. Eric, can you imagine what he would have gotten in UFA? I mean, a there lot. would have been there would have been a 15 team bidding war on him. I looked up. He is one of the lowest of the last ten years. He's in the bottom third of Calder earners. So anybody who's yep. on the Calder Trophy. He is okay. on the line of of what of what those guys are getting paid. Well, he and also put up much less production after his Calder season. He, no, the, 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 the word you want to say is points, not production, production. not production. Just, points just tells me but you points are what money. Watching his game, yes, because yes, you're right. He is you're right. very clearly playing within the system and being forced to play within the system. No, Which, Eric, I understand, uh, but the way points are what get you weird. paid. He, got, he didn't get paid on points, though, John. He actually got paid on production, if you think Clearly about it. Not. He, but well, he, got, there, he got yeah. overpaid based on his points, yeah. Yes, 100%. 100%. But the reason he's Rick not an here. earner like other guys Wait, is because second. he doesn't put up that point for Hold that close point total. Of the four <laughs> people here, of the four people here, on any other team in this in this league, would Matt Bars will be it, raise your hand if you think he'd be putting up more points than he does on the Islanders? Much more, much it, more. It depends on the team, though. I mean, of if he does, of course he would be. The, it's, it's not even. It, it, not it depends even, on. It actually does depend on the team, though. There's yeah. there's a few teams where you can make the debate that they're worse than the Islanders offensively. There's not many. <laughs> maybe like four. Maybe like four teams, but well, it, not even just that. In terms those of those are teams that are purposely fit. trying to lose, by the way. <laughs> but also in terms of where Barzell would fit, though, on those other teams. Yeah. 
But I also like, our, think like, 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 I say, like, I say, for example, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Where's Barzell playing? He's not. Oh he's, not he's not taking a Braden Point spot. He's not taking yeah, Sorrell's no, spot. He played wing. He if played wing. Is playing on the Tampa Bay Lightning. He is actually probably their first line center, and he puts up over a hundred points a year. No freaking way. You are not putting him above Braden Point. No freaking way. I'm telling you, I, they would. Absolutely not. He puts up is, on the Tampa Bay Lightning, but Matt Barzell puts up more points than Braden Point. Who said he has to play center, Brandon? Why don't you just put him with Braden Point and watch him get 90 points? I mean, who cares? Yeah, <laughs> no, stop, stop putting him on his wing. Just stop for a second. But this is second. also just, just a ridiculous a conversation right now. This all is right. getting away from my point, which is that we all agree that on pretty yeah. much 80, 85 to 90% of the other teams in the league, yeah. Matt Barkley would be scoring considerably more points. Which yeah, goes, it, again, begs the question, why does anybody care about his production? He is because uh, no, there is one is reason why. Valued, but that is ultimately bad for the team because we had him on a cheap deal and a really cheap Eric, deal. His and, production's good. Why do people keep saying production? Eric, production is in Barzell's favor. He only plays eighteen but, minutes a night. Yeah, he produces is, at the same level as Crosby. I mean, that's I, what, what more can you ask from a guy? There is one reason I'm concerned with point totals, though. Uh oh, my stream froze. Why? Why are you concerned with point totals for him? Because he's locked in. If you, if you make a certain amount of money, you lose the ability to create excuses, valid or invalid. Nah. To me, there is a figure it out clause. And if you make it over a certain amount of money, you go into that tier where. I don't care if you don't have line mates. I don't care if you're not being uh, seen correctly. I don't care if things aren't working out for you. Fucking figure it out. I and don't I disagree will. with that. I don't disagree yeah. with that at all. It's a team but, sport. But no. but we're still but like he's still not gonna be measured based on production on this team because everybody knows this John, team doesn't care about scoring John, goals. John, John, but, let me give you a really good comparison right now. When Devon Tays got hurt on Cal Colorado and McCarr got shifted line mates, he was getting killed out there. He was they giving up goals left and right. Devon Tays goes back in, all of a sudden he's right back to himself. Line yeah, mates are everything. They're everything. It's a team sport. I don't care how much money you're making. You think you think McDavid plays with nobody? You think McDavid, McDavid plays okay, with nobody? Okay. Listen, listen. If McDavid was on a line with Ryan Strom and fucking... It would still be better than what Barzell has. He would get 60 goals because he's McDavid. I, I don't agree with that. I mean, nah, Pooley Ar no, you know why that's wrong? Pooley Arby played, played with McDavid like and he couldn't score. The Toronto Maple Leafs. You're not right. You're and he not will right. still lead the team because he's off the Matthew. John, so, John Pooley so, Arby so, so played with ever. McDavid. Pooley Arby played with McDavid last year. The guy couldn't score a goal to save his life. McDavid so like it's, to save his life? No, no, Pooley Arby couldn't. I didn't say McDavid was gonna make Pooley Arby better. I'm saying McDavid's gonna get his. I've just see, I just I have every rebuttal for the Barzell hate because I've seen the best players in the sport struggle with bad line mates, and it's like, okay, it's not a Barzell problem. Like at least I know. But they figure I mean, it out. I, I figure what out? If Paul Mary sucks and Parise sucks, it's not his fault. But okay, listen. You can put David Pasternak on the third line of the Boston Bruins. He might struggle for a few months, but eventually he's going to figure it out and get his goals up because he's David Pasternak. I, the tough part is they're completely different players, and Barzell drives a ton of his offense through his passing. So if guys aren't uh, finishing, fine. Fine. Not, we'll take Mitch. We'll take Mitch Marshall. Pasternak would not be scoring the same well, amount of goals. The, the, Charlie the problem is, John, open, Mitch right. Marshall is probably a top five player in the league when he's hot. Barzell's not in that tier, and he doesn't get paid like he's in that tier either. Mitch Marner makes eleven million dollars. Barzell doesn't. He's no, he doesn't, he doesn't make eleven million directly below ten point nine. Whatever. Ten he's getting six. paid in the tier directly oh, whatever. below. Oh, come on, Brandon, please. <laughs> It's a still a tier above, especially and and, 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 and and Marner only got six years too. Barzell's getting and Marner's it. Marner's playing as a, as a winger. Wingers don't get paid as much. If Marner was a center, he'd probably make an eleven or eleven and a half. 
Marner also made fucking Kerfoot look good. Oh, and once again, we're talking about a guy who plays with Matthews. Like, I, I, I hate the Barzell discussion because every player you could ever bring up either has someone on the power play who's sick or someone that they play with who's sick. And Barzell, his best line mate is like Nelson. That's embarrassing. Yay, He's a second line center. We won. 5-2. Yahoo. Uh, all right. Me. All right. All right. So, theoretically speaking, if they put Barzal Love with Beauvillier, will the excuses be over? If he does not no. produce, is no. that going to be No, it would not No, uh, no but it will be more conducive to the way he plays. That's what's important, like getting him away from this, like, I don't know, style that doesn't work mean. with him. At he'll, what point? At, he'll be at in the 75 to 80 say, point range. Okay, oh, you got to figure it out. He, But I need to know what he – you want him to figure out, I think, goal scoring, which is understandable. But everything else that he does, I, I don't see a problem with it. He creates no, offense what, throughout the place. What I want him to figure out is I That's want funny. him to look at his teammates and say, how do I put you in the best position to score? <laughs> I mean, that's the coach's job. I mean, come on, no, man. No, <laughs> that's his job. He's the playmaker. Ah. But the coach is yeah. the one who makes the line, who coach is the one who makes the line combo. So I know that, but they're not during the it's flow of the game. The coach is not telling him pass this guy or that guy. This is his job. I this is to... the thing everyone says he's the best oh, at. Eric this is what this. he needs to figure out. How do I put you in a position to where you can maximize your efforts? See, These are this is another players. reason why I think Barry is gone. He had Lee and Bailey crashing the net, and people were like, how come Barzell doesn't go to the net? And it's because you got two idiots standing in front doing nothing. Who's he well, passing to? Not, the I'm not saying Lee, Lee, Lee should not have been Barzell's lineman. I'm to saying one Lee Ever. passes the net, that. why does he not pass it over to him before he gets there? I mean, I'm sure he does. I mean, it's just the fact that, like, they the, – well, one of the bigger issues is it takes Lee, like, another minute to get into the zone. So, like, he yeah, has to sure. wait. It, it sure. doesn't make – it doesn't – theoretically, it makes no freaking sense for Anders Lee to ever be F Barzell's five-on-five five line There's, No, I it, it made sense for Tavares. But it, in, in, ter in terms of speed, in terms of just a first-line type of game, there's no sense in that at I all. I agree. I agree. It, and it, 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 you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me when Capuano doubled down on the Letty Hamannick pairing. It was a pairing that absolutely sucked, and he kept rolling with it and rolling with it and rolling with it instead of taking the simple approach and putting Letty back with Boychuk. All you freaking have to do is say, oh, wait, who matches Barzell's speed? Who Who's Barzell's best attacker that he's ever played with, scoring at a high rate five on five? It's Anthony freaking Beauvillier. He's actually, right it's there. Probably, it's, it's, He's actually, right it's probably an international play, but sure. But What's up? Eric. Uh, I said, actually, it's probably somebody in international play, but sure. <laughs> Eric. Yeah. Eric, on a more optimistic note, this is one out of two things that brings this franchise back to being like, um, not, a, not a laughing stock. I guess it's one way to put it. I mean, they're not really as much anymore, but if they can sign a giant free agent uh, UFA forward now, after signing a, like an elite caliber player for the majority of his career so far, maybe not last year, but for the majority, I mean, the Islanders are back to being a relevant fr franchise in my opinion. So that's an optimistic way to look at it. Do your job next summer. Also, theoretically on a positive note, do you believe that eventually one of Ratu or Dufour with their shots would be a line mate that he can produce with and, uh, to have chemistry? I don't, no, think, I don't think I don't I don't think you would put Ratu or DeFour with Barzell five on five. I don't think nah, you would sure nah. play with the pace that he does. You would you would probably if you're that's if, not to say they're not gonna be NHL forwards. Let's make that clear. I think they yeah. both have a really good scope of making the Islanders at some point. But Ratu, from what I've gathered, only plays center and Dufour skates worse than well, right now he skates worse than Lee. I mean that's just I don't know. It wouldn't really. Well, make that's your wing argument. You can make Barzal a wing, but also, oh, if God. you wanted to with Dufour, what Barzal does really well is he stretches the ice. So if you're saying that when you have possession in the zone, and the ice is stretched, giving Dufour more opportunities in the slot wide open, he has the kind of shot to make that work pretty consistently. 
that would be something that realistically the problem is the problem is john let's say that happens we're still like three or four years away from that barzell is going to be exiting sure. his prime sure i mean like we need an answer now <laughs> like you know like next summer i don't really don't want to give anything up with it uh, listen they should be going as hard as they can after Pasternak. i think he's going to be a player who's incredible even when he's 35 36 i don't think anybody's old, going him i think well, how old I is think, he by the way 28 think, no, right now let me paraphrase I, I don't think there's any way the Islanders are getting him. I think Pasternak's probably going to stay with Boston. I'm just I think, saying. I, I, mean, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, look, like the, Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci took discounts to stay with Boston. Like, yeah, but Bergeron's gone after this year. Yeah, it, de- it depends it, it, on the direction of the team, Brandon. At, no, he's the, retiring know, they, after this season. There's no, there, he, no. He, he never said that, though. Where did he say that? If it's the key pasta, not contemplated <laughs> retiring after this season. I if he does, pasta knocks not a Bruin. That's all I gotta say. He's gone. Bergeron contemplated retiring during this offseason. How old is he? Curious. Bergeron is he twenty eight? Like... No, pasta knock. Oh, pasta knock. is twenty seven, twenty eight, something like that. He's twenty six, so he's gonna be oh. twenty seven, turning twenty eight. The Islanders should be. Gunning for him, he, they they should throw the bag at him if they can. Right. I don't care. All right, Phil. I'm sure that I'm sure that's going to work this time. Um, yeah, I, I'm got to be optimistic. Work. I mean, we just signed Barzell. I mean, you got to be a little optimistic. It's only yeah, but they, you, you signed someone. You signed someone who is on your team. What money no, are they going to use to get Pasternak? They have the cap room to get Pasternak. I yeah, just they don't. Do. I just don't think Poshnok would want to come here. Where? They didn't have the cap room to get... Um... Varlamov will be off the books. Yeah, they have $12 million, John, next year before they doing anything. And they, ha- and they have ba- they Bailey on... Who else do they have to sign? Who else do they have to sign? Bell- I- is it Wallstrom? Placement defense. You're going to have to give Wallstrom and Bellows a raise. Maybe. I mean, that- that's we don't know. And at well, and the caps are also supposed to go up by a few million as well. Yeah, it, 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 John. The dollars, I think. John, it's no one major. That's the big deal. Is and and Bailey only has one year left after this. Let's say he has a rebound season. You could probably move that contract now. It's probably movable. That's not movable. That contract will never. He has be one year left. He has one year left. Someone know, will take a second. Is, listen, that contract will be movable when you add a second round pick to it, and I don't think they're yeah. willing to. Well, I mean, if it's a, for Pasternak, would you that. trade a would you trade a second uh, and Bailey for Pasternak? I mean, I'm not. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but that's for you, fucking. You, you can't um, attach a pick, though. You can't attach a pick to move a player who could play because from a public, I mean. they're not going to do it from, a public, pers- from a public perspective. From a public perspective, it, is a it shows destination. <laughs> it shows desperation, though. If you're tr- if you're attaching picks to move players who can play. Unlike Lad, it shows organizational desperation from a public league standpoint. Right, if gets, they were not gets, willing to move, <laughs> if they were not willing to attach a pick to move Bailey to get Gaudreau when they were the only team that he was available to for hours on end, they weren't the only team. New Jersey, New Jersey, New Jersey no, was yeah, team. yeah, New no, Jersey the Gaudreau the real offer. The the Gaudreau one's tough because we know he's from uh, the New Jersey area. I don't think we would have won that. Bidding more, even if we had the cap. I mean, but they, if he wanted, they didn't, New Jersey didn't actually make him a real offer. The only reason he I went to Columbus did. is because this no is one all, made him a real offer. This is all speculation. All, all speculation. <laughs> all right. So to wrap it up, one bold prediction for the season: he gains. I thought of this. So. It just has no impact on whether or not his team will win a playoff series this year. But I'm predicting Austin Matthews will score more than 70 goals this year. I don't. But okay. What the heck? 70 goals? Yep. That would be... Yep. Absolutely. Mike Boss. I, did you see the pace of goals that he was scoring last year? It would be certainly very interesting, but... I mean, I don't know. I mean, he's he, got to focus on more defense because their goaltending sucks. So, I, 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 he, he might he might try to outscore their problems, though. Maybe. 
It's going to be like eight, seven games. <laughs> I mean, it, it's exciting. I mean, it's not out. It's not. It's really not out of the blue, though. Like what? He scored 60 goals in 73 games last year. So it's mm. all it's, right. It's, yeah. not, out of, right, it's not out of his realm. It's John, possible. what's your prediction? Kirill Kaprizov will win the Hart Trophy and the Minnesota Wild will defeat the Colorado Avalanche in the playoffs. Wow. That is a bad one. Mm. All right, Mike. Ready? Barzell hits 75 points next season. That's not a bold predict. That should happen. How is that not bold? He's playing with donkey ass. What do you mean that's not bold? <laughs> He hit 60 what, last You what, Parise scoring 40 goals, John? What's happening? <laughs> I think Paul, I think Paul Mary will double his goal total from last, well, close to double. What was it, 12? <laughs> oh, you, got, you, got, you, got, you got 15, no? <laughs> hey, in the yeah, second half, it's pretty good. In the second the half. Only, Paul Mary only scored 15 goals last year? And he has seven goals disallowed. Oh. He's going to hit close to 30. That's such an insane number. I know. It is. It's that's stupid. Such an insane number. Like, that's got to be some kind of record, right? He Watch. was cursed last season. That was, Most that, that, was, that, was, that, was that was funny. That was yeah. funny. That was funny. You know what's, you know what's not funny? Barzell uh, getting all this criticism because no one can score. All right, you go, Eric. My bold prediction is that Lane Lambert does not end the season as the Islanders coach. What? Oh. What? <laughs> and you still have them wait, wait, wait. I want to. I, I want to clarify something. I, you and have I'm, I'm possibly gonna, making yeah. the playoffs this season. Yeah, what happened? No, I, I had them on the bubble. I had them on the bubble. Think, the do you think they make the playoffs and have a coaching change? No. So, uh, so since then, I have watched all of the Lane Lambert interviews. I don't love his temperament i don't love oh i like him a lot I wait know. wait no i have inside info if you want it though i you ready for this i just don't i uh, just let me finish i don't okay I don't, I, it's, it's something about him that just does not shout head coach at me okay and, okay you ready for this i got it why it's my bold prediction because in my heart of hearts i am deathly afraid of how much work barry trotz was doing with this roster that we'll like yeah. supporting this island, this like massive world of Islanders garbage on, on his yeah. like Atlas. It's possible. Like Atlas just holding it up. And uh, so that's my secret fear. And that's why that's my. So point. some news for you that you definitely don't know about. Stefan Rosner was on the uh, Islanders Never Say Die podcast yesterday. And he let us know that Lambert in front of the media is a soft spoken guy. And we think it's part of Lou during practices. He screams and he points out players that fuck up and says, what the hell are you doing type of nonsense and makes like he's a tough coach. Tough. And I mean, it's probably what the Islanders need. They need a kick in the ass, to be honest. Like, what well, are you doing, I, Paul I, Mary? Hit the net. A lot of different sources <laughs> that he is really, really good with rookies. Like prospects and young guys fucking love I'm, him because he I'm shows just, a ton of passion. Well, I'm just saying what – act so you know we'll, we'll be fine what mm -hmm. eric saw it during those interviews is not what lambert is on the ice completely different person so that's fair i am i am really really worried about him that's okay. all i'm gonna say uh, and uh i guess that's it well mostly because i have to go okay <laughs> okay all right thanks guys take all care right, take care